And a shaman. Or shaman. Huh. I like the dragonling. The demolisher was not so great previously. I'm not feeling it. The hyena. I almost feel like I need to keep it just because it's a two cost. <laughs> I'd like to actually be able to play something this time. Hmm. Keeping the dragonling would probably be a mistake too, simply because I can't I can't actually play it for a while. Oh well. It's kinda hard to actually choose when you only get three cards to begin with. Both players should really get the same number of cards to choose from at the beginning. The fact that they have five right now is a bit absurd. <clears throat> oh well. I guess we're gonna be playing a couple of these. Hmm. Oh no. Well. Okay, we got that. It's gonna be useful later on. At least we have some protection this time. <coughs> Probably gonna end up getting another one of these out, followed by this. Yeah, of course you do that. It's pretty good. It's important. Mm-hmm. The question is, do they have overloads? They are, Shaman. So it wouldn't be surprising for them to have any overloads. Okay, well, I'm kind of, kind of tempted to play the Alpha as well as the Taunt, just so that if they attacked, they'd take two damage. Hmm, but if I played that, they'd take two damage anyway. Yeah, you know, I feel like I should probably get this out, and that. That way I can throw this out, and then sacrifice this if I need to. I probably won't need to, because it's going to die. Or, no, this. The alpha. If I need to sacrifice this, I'll actually be able to get a bit of damage out of it. Fair bit, eh? And I'll be actually be able to finish one of these off. Which is pretty good. Okay. That is reasonable. Hmm, hmm, I'd like to get the Dragonling out instead. But... I feel like... This would be one of the few times I can actually get synergy out of these. And I kind of have to make use of what I have. Okay, so... Do we want this out? No, not particularly. Let's just smack him in the face with our bow. And move along. Hmm. Probably gonna end up with the Dragonling next turn. Need more creatures on the board. Wolves with taunts. Not what we, not what we want to see here. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Now, dual explosives would be interesting. To say the least. And I might have to actually use it. Hmm. Not much else I can really do. And I need to get rid of those somehow. So I'm just gonna actually... No, I can't play two at once. That is a bunch of balls. Well... I guess next turn we're gonna have to play another one in addition to the mechanic, which isn't bad. I would just actually like to not take the extra bit of damage. If at all possible, which it clearly isn't. Alright, I'm glad that they used their totemic call first. That was stupid. Excellent. Pretty happy about that. Now if I played another one... Oh damn, an ogre. That's actually... That's pretty good. That might be the better option. But it could get hexed. Which is not particularly great. Hmm, I'd like to give it a bit of backup first, if I can help it. So let's do that. Uh, I'd like to not waste all these explosive traps on things that were summoned by a single card. But I don't have much choice. Alright, gonna kill off my creature with that. <clears throat> Probably should. Again, he's totemic hall. 
don't play creatures and then attack. Attack someone directly, play a low-cost creature, then play a big creature. This is the order of operations, and you must follow them. Oh, man. That is unfortunate, because now I can play one of these. Excellent. And now it gets hexed. Which is fine, we have other things. I like to get out the longbow. But it's a great bit of removal that I want to save for when something's on the field that I want to use it on. Mm -hmm. Alright, reasonable thing to do. Now getting this out would be pretty great for that extra damage. Yeah. When one of your minions is attacked, summon three 1-1 one, one snakes. Huh. Alright, well, let's get this out. Remove that. Do our damage. Get out the secret and smack him one. Hell yeah. Not bad. So now we have pretty good offense. We had pretty good offense. And I was going to say we have great removal as well for when you play something with a good amount of HP, which he just did. Okay. Let's get that out. Done. Sneaking that damage in. Bam. Now he's worked down to the point where I can just take two turns to obliterate him with my hero ability. And I have 26 HP. What's he going to do about it? I say as he like Alex draws us and... <laughs> Just obliterates me. Some kind of witchcraft. Wind Fury is a pretty good way to deal a massive amount of damage real soon, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. <laughs> okay. Yup. Snakes all up in this shit. All the snacks. Alright. That went pretty well. And that means we're on, what is it, three victories and one loss. Which means we're getting pretty good um, rewards out of this so far. We can move on to the next round. And another Shaman. Alright, last one went pretty well. I'm hoping this one doesn't go so bad. Hmm. Again, all these, not so keen on. I like the snake trap early on, actually, so... I'm thinking I should probably keep that. Yeah, because that combined with the Raid Leader would be a fantastic combination. And the Ghoul? Oh shit, Snake Trap Raid Leader for the damage and then throw down a Ghoul before wasting all the snakes? Oh shit. And also, snakes are probably beasts, which means the Starving Buzzard would not activate because it's... I'm not sure if it's considered a summon... No, it is, because it says summon three 1-1 one, one snakes, so if they are beasts, technically they're getting summoned, which means the buzzard should activate, theoretically. So, playing the buzzard, and then the snake trap, uh, the thing is then, then the buzzard, mm, well, I would still draw a lot of cards, theoretically. Okay, that works. So do we, do we want to get the buzzard out first? Probably. Yeah, let's go with that. I wonder. Indeed. Alright, buzzard coming out. Yes. Now, it's unfortunate, but it's not when a minion takes damage that snake trap activates, but when it is attacked. So, if he plays a creature that I feel I need to kill immediately, and that wastes off my buzzard, I won't be able to take advantage of the snake trap. I have to make him attack my buzzard, which means spells probably won't count either. Quite unfortunate. And he is going to actually do that. <sighs> so much for that glorious combo. But we do have a Tide Hunter, which I mean, that's pretty good. Oh yeah. Certainly a favorite of mine. It, you know what? This is this is probably my favorite card. It probably is. I mean, early on you get that out. Well, I mean, Defias is pretty good too, but it's not neutral. Or is it? No, I mean, that sounds like a roguey type of card, so I'm pretty sure it's just rogue. 
Hmm. Now, which do we prefer in this situation? That is a difficult question. Probably this. Huh. Mm-hmm. I don't know if my minions are actually going to be attacked at this point. But I'm going to throw this out anyway, just in case. I feel like it's the better option. Then I can get my nuke on with the raid, le raid leader, and alternatively, I can throw down this. So many combos involved with that snake trap, it's really fantastic. Mm-hmm, surprisingly so. I mean, that's... Essentially, the re-damage buff to this, or... Or, yeah, is it? Yeah, so it's the re-damage buff to this, or... It's snakes with 2-2, two, two, or 2-1. Two, that's the re... That's, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. All the stuffs. Now, here's the question. Would I prefer to play the raid leader right now for the damage nuke, or the ghoul for the extra buffage? Mm, this is a good question. Um, the re raid leader is probably the better idea. He can mass AOE, most likely, but if he did that, the ghoul would die anyway. So it's best to play something that I can get an immediate benefit from. And also that means I can finish off some of the stuff he has if I feel like it's necessary. Which it very well might be. Yeah, I feel like I need to get rid of the stuff he has, so let's do that. Off with their heads. Done. It was a massive waste of creatures in some in some ways, but I felt like he would just nuke stuff anyway. So, meh. Hmm. Five da five resources next turn. That means a ghoul and a direwolf can come out. Or the dragonling. Hmm. Ghoul would probably be the better idea. Well, no. He just killed that off, so it's not going to help much. So in that case, the mechanic would probably be pretty great. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Let's do that. That way next turn... I mean, these are probably going to die, but if they don't next turn, I can get out the Dire Wolf to finish that off. If he doesn't have a spell to remove it, it means that I will theoretically be able to have enough damage even if he attacks with it to finish it off. However, if he Totemic Calls to get his summon or his healing bot out, and then attacks, I would not actually be able to do that. And this is when a minion dies, not necessarily my minion, so it would be pretty great to get that out first. And then I'll definitely be able to do that. So I definitely should. What to do, what to do indeed. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, what cards are that going to be leaving me with? Just the owl and the trap. Yeah, I won't have much left. If he nukes everything, that'll be the end of my options. It's probably worth the risk. Oh no. That's unfortunate. Fork lightning. Yeah, that was, that was a good idea. Very good indeed. <clears throat> well, that is quite the problem. Hmm. Explosive trap wouldn't help much here. I feel like that should probably be silenced. I feel like it's a good use at the moment. Hmm. As much as I'd like to save the ghoul for when I can kill stuff, I might not be able to... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six with that. Okay. 
Silence that. Get this out here. <clears throat> to add some order of operations to his uh, calculations. And then I could throw this out in case he ignores me. Might be the better idea. Yeah, let's do that. So if he does ignore my stuff, I'll actually be able to finish off one of his creatures next turn. Not bad. Throw down another trap if I need to as well. Hmm. If he does ignore my stuff, that means I can also throw down the ghoul and actually get some value out of it. Which I'm quite keen on doing. Haven't been using my ability much. So next turn I'll probably be able to do that, actually. Getting up to later game, which means I have spare resources. But not spare cards, unfortunately. Uh-huh. Alright. Well, he's got a lot of single target removal type stuffs going on. So that does make my job rather difficult. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. I'm glad he played that. That'll help. Little time, bro. Hmm, overload. That's not going to really matter much this late in the game. Gonna have to do something. Oh. Alright. <clears throat> Interesting. Do I have a beast? No. Alright then. I guess we're just throwing this out here. With this. And perhaps a shot to the face is in order. At this point, it's not looking good. I'm hoping he attacks me first so that I can actually finish this crap off. But he's probably going to try to finish off my ghoul before anything gets out of hand. Most likely that means he's going to attack with his Gurubashi for... No, he'd probably send his Senjin at it. He's probably going to decide that attacking with the Gurubashi and his totem is too much of a waste. So going to send the Senjin, add my ghoul, sacrifice it, and then attack me directly. Yeah, most likely. That'll leave him with his Berserker out. With 1 HP and I won't be able to deal with it, but I'm not too worried about having 2 damage on the board on his side. I actually have a lead already, and I can actually poke 2 damage at him every turn regardless, because of my ability. I'm not actually concerned about that. Even if he plays Taunt Totems, they aren't going to help him. Mm hmm. But, how many turns would it take to kill him? Ten. It would take ten turns to kill him with my hero ability. It's not about to happen. I mean, we have seven mana on us right now. So we hit, we're not even at, at, at ten yet. And I need another ten. Stormwind, okay, I'm glad these, all these people playing creatures before, before attacking, it's the wrong order. But I'm glad I can actually do some damage to him, that's good. Hunter's Mark, oh damn. Oh no, they're, they're fusing. Okay, well, I guess at this point we have to get this out. I really don't want to waste a Hunter's Mark at this point, but I kind of have to. Hmm. It's... He's probably going to end up... Is he going to end up killing that off? If I were him at this point... No, he's going to use the axe to kill it off, which means it doesn't help what... Oh, no. Alright. So there's actually no reason for, reason for me to use this now, because... I won't have a creature on the board to do any extra damage. There's no point in using it. None. Because he's not going to attack it with his Stormwind. If he does, I'll be surprised. It would be a way to keep extra creatures on the board, I suppose. But he's probably just going to use his axe. Why wouldn't he use his axe? I would. 
But on the off chance that he does use his axe to hit me, that means I'll actually be able to turn around and use that. Oh, so I'm hoping he decides to just try to rush me down at this point. Which would be a reasonable thing to do because I do have the advantage when it comes to rushing down due to my hero ability. When it comes to top, top decking anyway, right now he has such a huge card advantage that it probably doesn't matter. Hmm. However, assuming he does just try to rush me down, that would leave him, or that would leave me with how much HP? Six, seven, eight, nine, nine damage to me. That leaves me with 13 HP and 11 if he uses his axe. That is quite dangerous territory indeed. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I'm definitely done here. Not much I can do at this point. Alright. Well, this certainly doesn't help. 5, 10. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty screwed. Very screwed indeed. Done. I'm out! So, moving on to the next round, I guess. I have one loss remaining. Probably will not go so well, but at least we are even. You know, we, we got our three wins. We're going 50-50 so far if we lose our next round, which we'll be now going into. And another shaman. Jesus. So many shamans. I mean, they're not bad. They have versatility, but goddamn. Okay. Well, I do have an extra beast, so I could take advantage of the buzzard. But I probably won't have the chance. I feel like I'm probably only going to be able to use this whenever I have it in my hand along with another beast. And I can play them immediately. I don't need the owl just yet. I'm going to get rid of it simply because having it in my hand right now is not going to help. There's nothing I can silence early game that would be worth wasting a slot in my hand that could be used on something that I can play earlier. Alright. Alright. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to be wasting good removal, good cheap removal, to do damage to his face. So you're just hoping he doesn't play anything. Coining into form of Direwolf Alpha. All right. Hmm. And I got the buzzard. So, I can't... Yeah, I might as well play this newly acquired Swampoos, since I have multiple now. I mean, alternatively, we could just do the two damage. But... I'm gonna go with the Ooze. He... If he wants to get rid of his wolf on my Ooze, I would be okay with that, because the wolf is generally more dangerous. Once he gets more stuff on the board. The danger factor of the ooze is pretty low, all things considered, <clears throat> compared to the wolf. Okay, well, he's overloaded. I'm pretty happy about that. Hmm, that means I can kill his stuff and play my own at this point, which I would very much like to do. So that's gone. Hell yeah. Excellent. Dead overload. Okay. Alright, that's... I mean, that's a waste. Huh. Well. I'd like to... I'd like to get out the raid leader to start doing more damage. It is a... It is a bit of a magnet. However... Hmm. He does give me more damage potential than the Demolisher. But this might let me leave stuff on the field longer, so maybe I should go with that early on. Wait till I have more stuff on the field before I play my buff. Mm hmm. It's quite nice art on that Demolisher. 
I did play WoW at one point, but only the starter edition. Quite like their machines, they're like ve vehicular devices. It's uh, rather unique being able to ride around in um, in some of the quests in uh, some of the siege weaponry. But I quit fairly fast once I got out of that portion of the game. All right. Well. Oh hell yeah. That means we can actually kill that off quite easily if we feel the need. We do have a nice combo at this point, which I'm quite happy about, but I feel like I should probably kill this off. Indeed. Now, the question is, do I want to get this out and then this out next turn or both on the same turn? This is a good question. Huh. Well... I would like the extra damage potential, so I'm gonna do it. It's risky, because if he nukes everything, it's quite the waste. I mean, that could be cards that I very, very much need. But, at the same time, I would like to start getting him down before it gets to the point where I need a whole bunch more cards. We must cleanse the Here's the hoping the... Oh no. Nah, I'm hoping the Demolisher. Oh no, damn it, Demolisher. <sighs> okay. So now we can get this out and that. So we get this out for the extra card, because that's the proper order of things. Alright, that's quite nice. But I'd like extra damage right now to finish that off. Um, I don't actually need the extra damage, really. Do I want to kill off the raid leader of mine? Hmm, or do I want to kill off of that? Well, I could ignore that. It is a distinct possibility. It's also very dangerous, especially via nukes. Well, I'd like to get as much creatures out on the field as possible so that this gets bigger. So let's just get more creatures out. So he's probably going to... I'm not even sure, probably the raid leader because it's more of a threat at the moment. The demolisher can kill off anything he plays. Well, assuming he doesn't mass nuke, at which point targeting doesn't really matter. But if he has to target, he's probably taking out the raid leader first, because that's where my damage potential is. And then... He's going to be in a situation where he won't be able to play anything, because it'll just be hit by the demolisher. Well, I say that, but it's probably just going to hit him instead of a creature, so... Probably not a big issue for him at the moment. As he got... Oh... Huh? Uh. Okay. Freezing. Well, that that's that's not actually a problem. <laughs> and is he now going to kill the raid leader? Or okay, so he's. I mean, killing the raid leader would get rid of more damage potential than killing off my whatever the balls that like. Let me. Oh. I guess I can't see unless he's... Okay, yeah. Well, killing the raid leader probably would have been the better idea. Now I have a taunt. So, yeah. Get that out. And this is five. So we get this out over, let's say, here. Get all that damage. And then just ignore him. And the goal is to at least get enough damage through that I can start whittling him down using my current health advantage and my I hero ability. Alright, big game, game hunter, killing off my shizwas. But it may not be enough. He's gonna have to get through my little mini shit taunt. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Yeah. And that, that leaves him vulnerable to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 damage plus my hero ability. 
He does have more resources, more mana at the moment, so he might still have something he can do about it. But if he doesn't, he dead. Hell, I even got the old wolf, so I can even make up for a lost creature if necessary. Not necessarily a lost raid leader, however. That is a bit too much to make up for. That's a loss of 5 damage if he kills that. Even still, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'll still be able to do 12 damage with the... No, wait. Like 9 damage with the raid leader gone. Okay, well. That's the end. Very much the end. Holy crap. Excellent. I even had that. Alright, that means we actually get, uh... Oh, I'm leveling up. Hell yeah. That means we actually get above the old 50-50 mark. Hell yeah. Alright, moving on to the next round.